Greetings YouTube, this is Remarkable Republican, here as always to bring you the truth with truth flavored bias. In a previous video, I laid out a strong case for Robert E. Lee's probable homosexuality. That video was generally well received, at least by those who have historical understanding. Some other viewers, who clearly don't know their history very well, demonstrated their ignorance in the comments, but I won't let their lack of knowledge prevent me from laying out the facts and properly informing the public. In this video, I look at some of the less known Confederate generals who were also homosexuals. Patrick Claiborne was a highly capable and popular division commander in the Confederate Army of Tennessee, famous for winning such battles as Perryville. He was also a homosexual. The evidence for Claiborne's homosexuality is even stronger than the case that one could make for General Lee. Claiborne had a staff officer named Irwin Buck, who later wrote a book about his time with General Claiborne. At one point in the book, Buck lays out the nature of their relationship in unambiguous terms. Quote, We were close and confidential. I habitually messed with him and shared his tent and often his blankets. This is a bold admission of his homosexual affair in the 19th century, when he ran the risk of besmirching the legend of Claiborne and possibly facing jail time for his perverted sexual practices. While this passage is buried deep within Buck's book, it was still a bold move and shows that Buck and Claiborne must have had a deep relationship. Aside from this passage, there is also sufficient circumstantial evidence that Claiborne was a homosexual. He was a lifelong bachelor who put off the concerns of others about his life choices by claiming to have multiple girlfriends at any given time. The likelihood is that this was a cover-up and that he got away with not being with a woman by pretending that he was interested in multiple women and feigning indecision. Back then, there was no sex before marriage, so this was a good way for Claiborne to disguise his true sexual orientation. In addition, many people over the years have wondered why Claiborne was passed up for higher command. One reason, which no doubt has a lot of truth to it, is that Claiborne's proposal to free and arm the slaves to fight for the Confederacy made the other generals uncomfortable. However, it is also likely that there were rumors of Claiborne's relationship with Irving Buck, which may have seeped out and made Claiborne's loyalty suspect in the eyes of the Confederate High Command. Another gay Confederate general was James J. Archer, who commanded a brigade in General Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Archer earned the nickname Little Gamecock for his ferocity in battle, although it is possible that this was an indirect reference to his homosexual practices. Archer attended Princeton and got a law degree there, where the other students called him Sally due to his slight build and effeminate traits. In addition, Archer never married or had any known female companionship. Simultaneously, he consistently kept to his soldier's life, fighting in both the Mexican War and then re-entering the U.S. Army in 1855. This suggests that Archer was very fond of male bondage and didn't like civilian life, which had so many fewer men in uniform. William S. Loring was another Confederate general who was probably a homosexual. He commanded major units in both Virginia and in the Army of Tennessee during the Civil War. He was mostly famous for quarreling with senior generals, and he so seriously outraged Stonewall Jackson's honor that he threatened to resign on account of Loring's insolence. Since being argumentative and petty is a characteristic behavior of homosexuals, and since the very righteous Stonewall Jackson was horrified by Loring's conduct, there's already some strong evidence of his gay tendencies. More importantly, Loring was actually called a homosexual and accused of having a lover's quarrel with a staff officer by General William Edward Grumble Jones. Jones also added that he had never seen Loring with a woman. In addition, Loring went to Egypt, converted to Islam, and became a general there under the Pharaoh for nearly a decade. Since Islam tends to offer cover for homosexuals by shielding people from sexual contact and Loring was a lifelong bachelor, it is likely that Loring joined Islam as a way to camouflage his homosexual lifestyle. If you will recall my video on Robert E. Lee, you'll remember that I proved that the famous Virginian general was a homosexual. Since making that video, I have done further research, and I think that I have uncovered Lee's partner in the Army of Northern Virginia. Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson was Lee's most famous and most skilled general, and I am fairly confident that he was a homosexual. Jackson was with Lee in Mexico, so the two men knew each other well. Jackson was well known for being withdrawn 
and holding very, very strong Christian views which bordered on fanatical. That could come from his guilt over his homosexual desires in a world before there were pastors who could help him pray the gay away. Although he proved worthy of the promotions he received from Lee, he was promoted to court command by Lee before he had shown himself worthy. Since we know that Lee was gay, and we see some gay tendencies in Jackson, it is not a big stretch to imagine that the two of them were lovers. When Jackson died at Chancellorsville, Lee cried in a way that one would not cry over a subordinate. His reaction seemed like how a man would react to the death of his lover. Until next time, I'm Remarkable Republican, bringing you the truth with truth-flavored bias, signing out.